And now on to Trump and his approval ratings, which plays into all of this as well. Many are crediting President Trump's rise in job approval on how he has handled the economy. But Steve Ratner, you say appealing to those being left behind could present an opportunity for Democrats. Tell us how. Yeah, well, what I'm saying in essence is that this economy is not working for everybody. So let me give you three examples of groups of Americans for whom the economy hasn't been working. We'll start with African Americans and look at their incomes as a percentage of white incomes. Mm. And you can see back in the 2000 2002 period, African Americans earned 80 to 81 percent of what white Americans earn. If you look at where we are today, we're down in the 76 percent range of what African Americans earn relative to what item, uh, to white Americans earn. And so you can see there's been this steady decline in the share of income that African Americans get relative to white Americans, the opposite of what I think most of us think should have been happening and probably even most of us think was happening. And what's also extraordinary is that today, and if you adjust for age and occupation and things like that, an African American earns 16 percent less than a comparable white American in essentially the same job. And yes, African Americans vote Democratic, but remember the turnout was down in 2016 after the historic Obama years, so a key for Democrats is getting that turnout up and getting African Americans out. Let's take a look at another group of Americans who have also been left behind, and those are people in the manufacturing sector. And this chart focuses on uh, the auto sector, and you can see that on an inflation-adjusted basis, auto workers' wages peaked back here, back in the t November 2002, at about at about 31 or so dollars an hour, and they've literally gone down 26 percent after adjusting for inflation to the to this level here of about $23 an hour, and they've essentially done nothing under President Trump, notwithstanding his promise to make America great again. Obviously, a lot of people in this category are the kinds of white working class Americans that turned over, to, went over to Trump last time, and the fact that their situation hasn't improved should be an opportunity for Democrats in the next election. And then lastly, let's look at, the, at, at what's going on in rural America, because uh, again, within the overall improvement in wages, there's a lot of divergence. So this chart uses just by an example, compares the wages in New York City to the wages in Mississippi and what's been happening to them. The green line being New York City, the orange line being Mississippi. Again, real, real wages adjusted for inflation. So you can see throughout this period, they were basically following a similar kind of trajectory. But literally since the middle of 2016, they've diverged. And so wages in New York City are now up 5% relative to where they were in 2016. Wages in Mississippi are now down 3.3% relative to where they were in 2016. This is a picture that is being repeated all over rural America. Democrats are not going to carry Mississippi. Why? Why in rural America do they plunge? Because the good jobs, the new jobs that we've been creating, are the so-called uh, intellectual, you know, intellectual growth industries, tech, things like that, healthcare, and those are concentrated in big cities. And secondly, as you know, there's been a trend among, among particularly younger Americans to want to be in cities, to want to be in real cities with a lot of things going on. And rural America has been totally left behind, and actually totally left behind in the South more so even than the rest of the country. Uh, again, Democrats may not carry the South, but there are these pockets of voters out there that, re that Democrats ought to be able to go get. Gene Robinson, even as we have this conversation, the president is tweeting the top line, very good numbers on the economy, much potential for growth. He goes on to talk about trade deals being negotiated and how he's changing our relationship with countries that it, he says have treated us unfairly. He'll point to the unemployment rate. He'll point to the stock mm -hmm. market. There are a lot of figures right. he can point to and say, look how well we're doing. But there are pockets, of course, big pockets of America that are not thriving under this economy. Right, and anybody who runs against him has other numbers to point to, and has to has to be able to point to the to to highlight those numbers, uh, the ones that Steve Ratner just showed us, uh, in a way that connects. And and so that's really the the challenge for Democrats, um, or, uh, who, for whoever ends up running against President Trump. And I, I I call it more a challenge than a dilemma. But yes, they want to get some of those white working class voters, some of those Obama-Trump voters back, as many of them as they can. Uh, but
But they also face, face a pretty bleak election if they can't fire up and motivate and get out the Democratic base. I mean, they just have, they have to get African American voters out in bigger numbers uh, than in 2016. Uh, they have to get young people out uh, in big, bigger numbers. Uh, you know, they they can put together uh, put the Obama co coalition back together, which did include young people and African Americans. Um, uh, they can see a majority there, and so it's a that's going to be the the challenge, I think, for the for the Democratic nominee. And just to emphasize one other point, and as Dave Wasserman said, it will be a nominee. It will not be mm -hmm. a disembodied set of policies um, or, or a platform. A platform doesn't win the presidency, but a, but a candidate does. And so it has to be a candidate who uh, who embodies and expresses the kind of uh, hopes and dreams and aspirations and anger of, uh, of, of enough voters to win. And Eddie, the president will rebut what we saw in that first chart about African Americans in America saying African Americans currently or have in the last six months anyway had the lowest unemployment rate in their history but it's still almost double the national unemployment rate. Exactly, and he will try to. He will also try to make an argument that it's undocumented uh, immigrants, not illegal aliens, undocumented immigrants who are, in some ways, mm -hmm. the reason for wage stagnation, for all the things that that are hap that, that's happening in black communities. And I think we don't need to fall for, as we would say back home, that old that okie doke, right? Part of what I do think we need to just reject and throw out once and for all this false opposition. And I, I hear what David's saying. But we need to reject this false opposition between white men manufacturing workers and, 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 and African-American voters, right? We need to understand that if the Democrats put forward an agenda, an agenda that speaks to those kitchen table issues that cut across race, that we don't in some ways pay, it, pay homage to this old kind of logic that has defined the American electorate, right? Where we, are paid, we play, play to these racial sentiments, but really speak to the issues that cut across race. Then the Democrats will be successful. But if they try to be Republican light once again. Okay, but, the but, base but, but, will but, but, not turn out, Eddie. Joe. They will not turn out if it's Republican light but, again. But, but, but Eddie, understand, if you take away health insurance from 155 million Americans, the majority of which, and you can look at Pew Research, that says the majority of those 155 million Americans like their health insurance plans. Right, right. If you take that away from them, that has nothing to do with white or black or Hispanic or Asian American, that is but, the but, kitchen table. So but, when people talk about Medicare for all, what they're talking about, if it's in a pure form, is taking away private health insurance plans from all Americans, regardless of race, the 155 million Americans who like it. That's where Democrats, some might say, need to tread carefully. Joe, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I just want to say this really quickly. In 1980, when Ronald, 1979, when Ronald Reagan was running, and people, George H.W. Bush said his economic philosophy was voodoo economics, when people said he was crazy, that he would, in, he would lead us into a third world war, when all of those folks right. who were in some ways the ideologues behind the Reagan revolution were listening to folks, moderates within their party and Democrats on the other side saying this would destroy our economy, it would destroy America. Right. They didn't pay attention to him. So I'm going to say right. to those Democrats, we love you, Joe Scarborough. Don't pay attention to you. Right? Just simply put forward that agenda to change the center of gravity of the country and watch, watch what happens. Pay no Joe's attention. You know <laughs> run, run, for the, run for that cliff and jump <laughs> off and flap your arms really All fast. Right. So he just called his maybe maybe you'll fly. I, that's what he I will called. say, Democrats, for those of you that have been saying over the past couple weeks you shouldn't listen to me, that's fine. I mean, I do care because obviously I've made it very clear I don't want Donald Trump to get reelected, but I will tell Correct. you, you didn't listen to me in 2016, did you? In fact, you mocked me. You said a lot of nasty things about me when I told you Donald Trump could win, could get to 270. Oh my God, would you like to see the press clippings then? Maybe, just maybe, Eddie, maybe a few should listen. <laughs> right. Again, up to you. Hey, Dave, so let me ask you this question. I, I, you look at 2018, there were some pockets that I found absolutely fascinating. My old friend Pete Sessions lost his his uh, race in suburban Dallas. I don't, I would have never seen that coming two years before. Are you seeing any trends post 2018 
that are surprising you like that or anything that you saw after having a year to pour over all of those results that that are making you look at say Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida any differently or Georgia. Do Democrats finally have a chance in Georgia? Yeah, Joe, look, uh, Democrats are doing better and better everywhere there is a Whole Foods market and there's kind of stagnating everywhere there's a Cracker Barrel or a Dollar General. And if you think about the electorate in Kentucky, who's in that electorate? Well, it's rural Americans, it's auto workers, and yes, a few African American <clears throat> voters as well in Louisville. But the danger for Democrats with Amy McGrath, for example, is that she's going to draw money away from Senate races that are actually winnable. Uh, look, she ran for Congress in 2018 in a fairly rural district. Yes, it has Lexington in it. She made it competitive, but she still lost by a few points in a district that, that went for Donald Trump by 15. Mm. Well, Kentucky as a state went for Trump by 30 points. Uh, Democrats, and, and no offense to Amy McGrath, are fundamentally unelectable uh, at the federal level statewide in Kentucky. So they have to keep that in mind when they're targeting states, and they have to be able to find a message that can hold on to the states that still are winnable uh, at the presidential level, uh, like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. I'd also throw in Arizona and North Carolina as potentially decisive states. All right. Uh, Dave Wasserman, thank you so much for being on this morning. And still ahead on Morning Joe, President Trump has often claimed that he's brought America's coal industry back to life. But a growing number of the country's coal miners apparently don't feel the same way. NBC News' Heidi Prisbilla has new reporting on the invitation the industry is now extending to some of the 2020 Democrats. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.